Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's. As you know, we're in Arlington Heights, Illinois. It is fall in this particular time of year and we are just having a wonderful little event here in our store today with Joyce Hughes doing lots of fall quilting and um, beautiful quilting like we have behind me. This is a quilt that I'm gonna show you a few things on today that I think will give you I hope inspire you and get you um, back into kind of the fall mode. We're, um, we've had beautiful weather. We know winter is right around the corner. And so I'm going to give you a couple of little projects that I think would be really good for you to kind of think about during these winter times or maybe times you're in the house if you're in a warmer climate and you know it's still not where you, the, the weather is kind of bad and you just want to be inside and doing something. So what I'm going to do today is explain about decorative stitching. Now, I know you see what's on the machine here. It looks like um, not, you know, it's a hoop, right? And many of you say, oh my gosh, I don't have a hoop. I only have a little machine and I have decorative stitches on my machine. That's okay. You are still going to be able to do what we're doing, only I'm doing it in a much faster and a quicker way. Those of you that do have the hoop machines, I'm working on a Janome uh, M17, which some of you know is now mine. <laughs> I love it. It's been a really fun thing because of this great big hoop. And I have been exploring different types of things that I can do not only with my regular sewing, but with my quilting. And if you look behind me, this quilt has quite a bit embroidery in it. And I don't know if we can get up close to it, Nick. You can see this, there's these little squares. There's one here, 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 big ones down here, but smaller ones up here are absolutely stunning because they're done with embroidery. It's an embroidery design that's in here that was done before the quilt was put together. Now, if you wanted to take a border, because you can see these borders are on already, and you wanted to do carry that theme forward with that beautiful gold thread in there and do a des decorative design down the border, and I would start in the center, and you could do all of these and all of these, I'm going to give you some designs that would just be stunning for this quilt. I think it would be something that um, you probably haven't tried before. It doesn't have to be a great big huge one like we're doing here. It could be a much smaller one. And if you look at this beautiful um, piece that I've got in the machine right now, I've done all the decorative stitches here. They, this is called borders. It's borders into the machine. And I know that many of you have machines that do have decorative stitches on your um, the cover or you can look on your screen and you can see that they're there. Some of you have mechanical machines, you still have stitches. Unless you have just a straight stitch and a zigzag machine. But if you have any kind of a zigzag machine, you will be able to do this. And I have been experimenting with many of these um, embroidered designs, um, these little decorative stitches, we call them, on my quilts. I think it is just kind of enhancing the quilts. You saw one of my videos, I think, in the, few, in the past where I did the little decorative stitch around the outside edge. And I know I had a um, uh, husband and wife come in today. I actually was um, uh, there when they came and they were buying the same fabric that I had made for my great granddaughter, Char Charlotte. And I just, I looked at them and I said, oh, I just made a quilt like that. And they said, we know, we saw your video and we're in here because we want to do the same type of thing. She loved the little decorative stitches around the outside of the, um, the binding. So now, why all these different stitches in this hoop? I want you to be able to see what they look like on fabric. I can many times visualize, but it's still not the same when you're looking at the, you know, the cover of a machine or you're looking at the book and you see the colors or the, the designs there. When you can actually see it sewn out, It'll make all the difference in the world. And I'm gonna show you how to do this real quickly, but before I do, I've made some samplers that I think are really um, great. I'm actually gonna teach this in our, um, our embroidery club. This is one, um, 
I'm gonna get rid of my coffee here, a little sip here real quick and put it down so it doesn't get on any of this. Now, <clears throat> Nick, would it be better to put it here or do you want me to hold it up? Hold it or we'll get a better yeah. All right, that's one. And you can see, and I'm gonna show you some techniques why um, some of this looks a little better than the others. This is my favorite one right here. I love this stitch right here. I think it's real, and I love this one. And I like the thicker ones, but look at the little kitty ones down here. And there's anchors, and there's um, tulips, and um, and I've got a thread here that I'm gonna take my scissor and cut in a minute. <laughs> so anyway, they they and what I did on the back is I just uh, back them. You can kind of see there's just a plain backing. I wanted these in white because I wanted to see them really show up. And you can see that some of them are filled, some of them are thinner. Look at how thick this beautiful one is. Wouldn't this be gorgeous on a pillowcase? This would be wonderful. If I wanted to do one of those borders, um, this one would be just stunning going around the octagon of the quilt there. Or you could take a flower or, you know, take some of the um, the designs that kind of work with the design that's there. And what I would do, just exactly like I did this sampler, you would take the fabric, like I put it in this hoop, and I guess I'll move over here, Nick, and they can really see what this um, is like. If you look at this, you can see I use the OESD woven, um, uh, heat and st no, it's not the heat and stay. It's um, the woven uh, fusible that they have. I used it in a lot of my, um, um, you know, those tile uh, scenes that we have. But it's actually a woven fabric, and I thought it would really give it a nice body. And I might not have to put the um, the tearaway underneath. Well, I was wrong because if you look at this sample again, I'll put it on here. You can kind of see there's a little puckering here, but there isn't over here. This side did not have the stabilizer on the bottom, and this side had it. So it makes a big difference of what I'm doing here. I put literally a floating piece underneath the hoop. And if you've never tried that before, try it because it really does work. So the floating piece is right underneath the hoop. The uh, woven fabric, the stabilizer from, and the, uh, let me go back to the floating piece underneath the hoop. That is called Ultra um, Clean Tearaway. It's, all, it's an OEST product. It's a wonderful product. And then the um, fabric, that, again, that I stabilized, I fused with an iron to the top of the, the back of this fabric is that uh, woven fabric. You can see that I've used the 40 weight thread on here. I'm trying to use some bright colors so you can really see. Look at this gorgeous little, there's another thread I need to trim, but look at those gorgeous little bows and look at the wheat. Can we get it up here? Okay, <laughs> I'll get my hands out of the way so you can see it. It's really, I think, uh, just a sweet. One's going this way and one's going this way. I thought they would be just so much fun. Look at the little ducks up here, the little, they're actually a little bird, or little chicks, I guess. They're really sharp. Yeah, very, very sharp, very clean. Um, those of you that are musicians, we I stopped over here with the, um, the notes. I thought they were really so fun. So now when I'm through with this, I'm gonna take it out of the hoop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some batting and I'm going to actually, um, I love the Floriani um, uh, embroidery batting. I see, see what nice body it's got. And that's what I put under these. It just, I don't sew on the, the embroidery batting. I actually, um, just the stabilizer I talked about, but the embroidery batting just gives it some real good um, stability when you have your, you know, your pieces like this put together. <clears throat> Now, let me show you what I've done over here. Can we go, Nick, to the screen? So well, now we get the camera focused right up here on the screen of the machine. It's a huge screen. And this is the little stylus that comes with it. You can see the, see the little notes down here, and you can see the little ribbons I was talking about, and the little ducks. And So I have two rows. And how did I get them so even? Because you can see that I have these rows, these all on the left side, all of these um, little designs are from um, one section of the machine. 
Then when I go over here down this side, this is actually called borders. And you remember, I mentioned again about some of the designs you could use. This would be wonderful for your quilt. These little tiny ones, it depends on whether you want a thicker design or you want a more open design. That's the beauty of being able to choose this for yourself. Say you are musical and you are doing a, a music quilt that would be just absolutely beautiful with these designs. How did I do this? Well, let me show you how I got these on the screen and then you can find a way in your machine to do the same kind of thing. Because what happens here, once I have all the designs on the screen, I can just go ahead and press my start stop button and it will start, it'll sew from the very beginning to the end without me touching it. So I know they're gonna be in perfect alignment. I know that they're going to be in um, nice thick colors because I put a, an embroidery thread on the top so it's gonna pop up real nicely and I don't have to continue to keep doing each row. It's just a very, very good way to show um, on fabric what's in your machine. Now, let's move to where I can show you how to do this. This particular full screen now shows you some of the things that I was doing. All of these designs, there were 59,000 stitches. The way that I was able to do this was to go in and actually um, go into the, the area that would be embroidery. So if I go back home, you can see the front. This is in, on all your machines, you should have something like a little house that shows you how to go back home. I'm gonna go into embroidery me, mode. It says unsaved designs will be erased. That's okay, because I have that saved on my little trusty uh, Linda Z's USB stick. All right, so now I have a blank, um, a very blank screen, but I want the grids on there. And so what I'm gonna go do is, I'm, I know in my particular machine, I was working with borders, and it was in this particular area. See this and this. And if you look at some of these designs, there's the wheat, this is the little um, fleur-de-lis, the, the notes that we were talking about. My next, because uh, I only went and look at the pages. I'm gonna go back. You can see there were just some really, really beautiful designs. I'm gonna count these designs as I put them on. And, or if, once you get to know where you are, this up to see where it says border here, I know I'm about ready to go. I can say, okay, but I don't, you can see this hoop now look, see all the grid lines on here? But the hoop, if you look down here, is not the right size. It's a five by 5.7. The wonderful thing about this great big hoop is you wanna be able to put all the ones that you want in there. And ooh, I did double on there, so I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna erase it. So now I have one and I can move it over a little bit to the side. I, can, I could erase that one again because I did three, six, nine, 10. I'm going to erase it. I'm going to go back to my um, design. <laughs> go back to my design. <laughs> Sometimes I get so fast. My, my uh, brain is faster than my fingers. <laughs> okay. So here I'm. Uh, five, six, nine, ten. Right, let's do a couple more. All right. So now I have enough that I know it's going to completely cover the first line. And see how nice that is? I'm going to, uh, I only want to go on this side of the grid. I'm going to fill it all the way down. And then when I'm through there, I'll start over on this side and do another row. So let's look, I go back to the design. I already did this one. So let's go to the little mask or I'm not sure what that is. A little eight could almost be an algebraic design too. I think that's enough there. I'm not going to do quite as many. I'll say, okay. And again, and the great part about this, when I'm moving this, see, I'm, I'm going to leave one space in between. I'm going to push it over a little bit. And see how I've got the space in between? So then, that way they're not too crowded together, and it looks really nice for the next one. Let's put the next one in. This is kind of a fun one. It looks like a, a little French design again. Or it could be even a key design, and it's thicker. So I might want to leave a little more space in there. Let's put it up a little bit more. And this is the great part about designing this. You can put it wherever you want. I'm going to go a little bit more to the right. And you can see I'm going to go back. And that's what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to go and get every single one of these 
put them on, and once I'm finished, now I'm not going to be saving this, but I will put OK on here. And let's do an OK. Um, let's see. Oh, it, you know it's so smart. It knows that I didn't do a design. So let me go back to it. And if, say this was filled on this side and this side. Now I would go ahead and save that into my folder. And it's I'm not going to go into that for all of you because you've got different machines. But I would save it, and then I would put my USB stick in once it's all completely filled up. So I have it here in case I want to um, be able to uh, change it or do a couple of other little things. I'm going to finish that up. Let's see, when I put the OK, keep hands clear. Hoop will now move to center position, which is what we want it to do. And I can put my hoop in, and if I had a blank hoop, I would be able to then go back and do the sewing on the machine just the way I did um, on the two designs there. Again, the whole purpose of this is for you to be using some of these beautiful designs in your machine. And if you do not have a hoop, what you can do, you can still do exactly what we did just by making, you know, I would actually take um, a marker, one of our frizz-on pins or maybe one of the chalks and actually make lines across and then do and make a, a grid line like is on your machine. Now most of the machines do have those grid lines today but if it doesn't you easily can do this and then you have a sampler of what your machine will do. I hope this has helped you. Uh, we do have a much longer version of this in our clubs so we, we did some with uh, Liz, if you want to talk about that. Liz did a few to show off the Bernina, so ah, we got a few silk plugs. So, so Liz did do some decorative stitches, so they're in there right now. Yeah. Good. Was it in Soul Club or yeah. was it in Bernina? It was in Soul Club. Mm -hmm. That's Nick, if you don't know. <laughs> okay, thanks, Nick. And the... Um, it, I'm, we're going to film this a little bit longer because I want to take you step by step, those of you that are club members, so that you know how to dip, get these little curves on the edge. Uh, I did a top stitching with a, I used on this like three or four machines. So I, that's the fun part about it, that you don't have to use just one machine. And some of you have got different things that your different machines will do. More graphic, like examples on how where people would use these sorts right like, you know when you're mm -hmm. painting your home right you have, you want to share that and I, I hope you can hear what what he's saying because it's we really want to give you and we can't do it in a short period of time like this more ideas about very specific like I have a whole group of designs that I'm doing this with for some children's gar garments um, there's another design here that I do this one I do, use for all the holidays where they're uh, patriotic like your 4th of July and even your voting days and you know whatever so these yeah, little you bells know what your machine has, you right refer to it. and and what happens I would love to have you in this video and in this YouTube let me know how many of you have or have not ever used your embroidery designs or how many times maybe you've used it once or twice and when you see what is there, I guarantee you, you're going to just love your machine and you're going to be able to use it more. So that's the whole purpose. We <laughs> hope you're going to have fun with it. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, those of you that are there, because then it'll come together and you'll get notifications when we do do a, a new uh, event and what it will be. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. See you next Thursday.